All right, happy Saturday. Thank you all for joining me for a 90 minute yoga class. We're gonna do five rounds of sun salutations to warm up our body. And then we will hop into 26 and two yoga. Um, during class, if something does not work for you, you are welcome to modify. You're welcome to do something else or you're welcome to skip the posture entirely. Um, yoga should be challenging, but you're never going to a point of pain, a point where you could cause harm to yourself or others. So just keep that in mind during your practice. Yoga is a wonderful opportunity to practice like setting boundaries with yourself, right? So for the sun salutes, come towards the top of your mat with your feet close together. I'm gonna to stand back and show you in periphery. The first two sun salutes we'll do are half sun salutes. And if those speak to you, keep doing those. From there, we'll move on to full sun salutes. Okay, bring your hands together at heart center and begin. As you inhale, lift your arms up overhead, looking up as if you're saluting or greeting the sun. Exhale, arms with ears fold, knees can bend, hinge at your hips. When your hands touch the floor, you can relax your head down. Inhale, lengthen into a halfway lift. You can have your hands on your thighs, your shins, or the floor in front of you. Back flat, shoulders away from the ears. Exhale, bend your knees and fold again. Relax your head down. Inhale, arms with your ears root to rise, lift up, hinging at your hips, look up. Exhale, hands down at heart center. We'll do another one of the half salutes. Inhale, lift your arms, look up. Exhale, stomach in, arms with ears slowly fold. Make your exhale slow. Inhale, lengthen, halfway lift, shoulders away from the ears. Look forward, hips over heels. Exhale, bend your knees, soften your head, relax. Inhale, arms with ears, lift up. Try to come up with a flat back, knees can bend. Exhale, hands down at heart center. You can continue with the half salutes or go into full salutes. Inhale, lift your arms, look up. Slowly exhale, bend your knees, fold. Inhale, lengthen into a halfway lift. Exhale, put your hands on the floor, shoulder width distance, and step back into a high plank or tabletop position. On your next exhale, hug your elbows in and lower down halfway like you're pulling yourself down to the floor. Inhale, come up into a back bend. You can do cobra with elbows bent and thighs on the floor, or up dog with arms straight and thighs off the floor. Exhale, tuck your toes under, lift your hips up for down dog. You can pedal out your legs, bend one knee, straighten the other, and then press your heels to the floor, hips to the ceiling, push the floor away from you, drop your head, and look for your thighs behind you. If down dog is not speaking to you, come down onto your knees and take a child's pose instead. Sink your hips down as you stretch your arms forward. On your next inhale, hands to the floor, look forward, step forward, lengthen back into your halfway lift. Exhale, slowly fold, relax your head. Inhale, arms with ears, hands together, lift up. Try to come up with a flat back, look up. Exhale, hands down at heart center. Two more, inhale, lift your arms, look up. Slowly exhale, bend your knees, fold. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Exhale, hands to floor, step back into your high plank or tabletop. Let's hold our plank for a moment. If that lowering down motion does not work for you, skip it, go straight from your plank or tabletop directly into your down dog or child's pose. Otherwise, take a vinyasa, lower down like you're pulling yourself down. Inhale, come up into your back bend. If you're doing up dog, make sure thighs off the floor. Exhale, lift your hips up, tuck your toes under for down dog or sink your hips down for child's pose. Now, if you're doing down dog, spread your fingers wide, root down through all 28 knuckles, especially the space between your index finger and thumb. Make sure you're not putting all of your body weight on your wrists. Press your heels down, lift your hips up, look for your thighs behind you. Inhale, look forward, step forward, lengthen. Slowly exhale, fold. Inhale, root your eyes, lift up, biceps with ears. Exhale, hands down at heart center. Last one, we'll go a little fast. Inhale, lift your arms, look up. Exhale, bend your knees, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, step back, high plank. Keep exhaling, slowly lower down. Inhale, your up back bend, your up dog. Exhale, your down dog, your child's pose. If you're doing down dog, try to get your heels to the floor. If your heels don't touch the floor, you can try taking a little bit of a bigger step. If you have tight hamstrings, micro bend your knees a little bit. Otherwise, think about pressing your knees back. 
hips up, heels down, push the floor away from you. Inhale, look forward, step forward, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach your eyes, lift up. Exhale, hands down. Wonderful. So that's our little warm up. We will now hop into our 26 and 2 yoga sequence, starting with pranayama deep breathing, good for your lungs and respiratory system. You'll inhale through your nose, exhale through your mouth, all the time against the back of your throat. Breathe as much as possible, as long as possible, as slow as possible. Um, your lungs are only, a, your throat is only a passageway. Bring your feet together. I haven't said the full dialogue for pranayama deep breathing in a while. Bring your feet together, toes, heels touching nicely. Interlock your 10 fingers, cross your thumbs, glue your knuckles underneath your chin. Rock your weight into your heels. Relax your shoulders down away from your ears. You made it to class. Concentrate, meditate, and begin. Inhale, chin down and arms up. Breathe in through your nose. Lift your elbows up. Suck your stomach in. Fill up your lungs. Exhale, head up. Exhale through your mouth. H-A, sound head back. Arms forward, elbows touch. Good. Inhale, elbows out and arms up. Slowly bring your chin down, look straight ahead. Lift your elbows all the way up, breathe deep, full lungs. Exhale, head up, slowly push your head back. Look way, way, way back for the wall behind you. Arms forward, elbows touch, pointing forward. Inhale, head down, keep the weight in your heels. Contract your quadricep muscles, gluteal muscles, lock your legs. Exhale, head up, weight stays in the heels, hips a little forward, hip muscles contracting, eyes open, arms forward, elbows touch. Inhale, head down as you inhale, suck your stomach in, unless you're pregnant, depression to abdominal wall, contraction to abdominal muscles. Exhale, head up, even as you exhale, stomach in, shoulders down, elbows up, triceps parallel to the floor. Inhale, head down. So think like an accordion. As you inhale, open your rib cage, open your elbows, open your lungs, full lungs. Exhale, head up. And just like an accordion, you're going to squeeze your arms together as you push the air out. Keep exhaling until your lungs are empty. Inhale, head down. So we're working on lung capacity. Take in more and more and more air. Exhale, head up. The more you exhale here, the more fresh oxygen you can take in on your next breath. Push all the air out. Inhale, head down. So make this the deepest breath so far. Breathing into the top of the lungs, middle of the lungs, bottom of the lungs, full lungs. Exhale, head up. In our day-to-day -day life, we don't really use the full lung capacity, but the lungs need to be worked out like any other part of the body. Inhale, head down. Let's do two more breaths in the first set. Chin down, elbows up, stomach in, look straight ahead. Exhale, head up. Use your eyes to trace an arc along the ceiling. Slowly look back, stretch your arms forward. Exhale more than you think you can, elbows touch. Inhale, head down. This is the last breath in the first set. Make your spine a little longer, elbows a little higher, lungs a little fuller. Suck your stomach in, breathe deep, full lungs. Exhale, head up, take your time. Eyes open, hips forward, legs locked, stomach in, keep exhaling, push, squeeze, elbows touch. Good, change, arms down, you can roll out your shoulders and head. Second set, feet together, interlock your 10 fingers, cross your thumbs, you can switch the grip, other thumb, pinky finger on top, bring your knuckles underneath your chin like glue so your top thumb is pressing into your throat a little bit. We're not just working on lung capacity here, we're also working, of course, on our neck and shoulder mobility, but also we're learning how to breathe slow, right? So keep the weight in your heels, thighs tight, abdomen in, stretch up, and begin. Slowly inhale through the nose for one, two, three, four, five, six, full lungs. Slowly exhale through your mouth for six, five, four, three, two, lungs empty, one. Inhale, head down for one, two, three, four, five, elbows up, six. Exhale, head up for six, five, four, three, two, elbows touch, one. Inhale, head down, use the full six seconds to inhale. It helps to keep the thumb gently touching the throat to remind the throat to be a little constricted. Exhale, head up, think of your throat like a valve. You're breathing slower, longer, look back, arms forward, keep exhaling, elbows touch. 
Inhale, head down. So take your time, slowly chin down. You're creating a little bit of a snoring sound, a vibration against the back of your throat. Exhale, head up as you exhale. H-A, sound, head back. Arms forward, exhale more, elbows touch. Inhale, head down with the snoring sound is subtle. You're not using your vocal cords. It's just the sound that the air makes as it passes against the back of your throat. Exhale, head up. Take your time. Slowly tilt your head back. Never force the neck. Squeeze your palms together, wrists together, forearms, elbows touch. Inhale, head down. So we're learning to move slowly, right? Breathing slowly, synchronizing the breath with the body movements. Exhale, head up. And like I said, you're also working on neck and shoulder mobility. It's just the neck that's moving at the beginning of class. Make sure you're not backward bending. Inhale, head down. So from the side, the lower body stays still like a statue. Shoulders down, chin down, elbows up, look straight ahead. Exhale, head up. Just your head drops back. No backward bending. Engage your lower abdominal wall. No curvature in the lower back. Inhale, head down, take your time. Try to keep the elbows lifted, shoulders down, chest proud. Exhale, head up. So triceps parallel to the floor. Try to keep the elbows lifting up, shoulders stretching down the whole time, elbows touch. Keep the elbows lifted, bring the arms out to the side, up to the ceiling, chin down, look straight ahead, breathe a little bit deeper. Exhale, head up. We're preparing for the last breath. So make this the deepest breath so far. Exhale completely, keep exhaling a little bit more than you think you can, elbows touch. Inhale, head down, last breath. Second set, deepest breath of your life when your lungs are totally full. Surprise yourself, take in one more sip of air. Exhale, head up. Take your time, let everything go through the exhale breath. Any worries, any cares, let them go. Be here now, elbows touch. Good, change, arms down. We'll continue with Ardha Chandrasana with Padastrasana. Half moon with hands to feet pose, feet together. Inhale, arms overhead, palms together. Interlock your fingers, release your index fingers, cross your thumbs, nice tight grip, stretch up, and bend right and left, right and left. Every time you pass through the middle, stretch up a little taller. And when you can't stretch anymore, come to stop in the middle. Bring the weight into your heels, press your hips a little forward, squeeze your palms together, bring your head and arms back, touch your biceps to your ears. So you want your hips, your rib cage, your chest, your shoulders, everything opening to the wall in front of you. Root down through your heels. Imagine a nice long line from your heels all the way up to your fingertips. Inhale, stretch up. Keep this alignment. Exhale, slowly bend your body to the right in a straight line without bending your elbows without bending your knees, continuously push your hips to the left beyond your flexibility. You're trying to create a tremendous stretching feeling in the left side of your body, all over, inside out, bones to skin, fingers to toes. Just remember it's the first posture of the day and there's no rush. Know where you need to be, nothing you have to prove to yourself or to anyone else. All you have to do is breathe slow and steady in and out through the nose. On days where your body can't quite do what you want it to do, focus more on your breath. And if at any point your practice starts to get away from you, make your exhale a little bit slower than your inhale. Keep the weight in your heels, press your hips a little forward, squeeze your palms together, upper body back, touch your biceps to your ears, push your left hip a little forward, get your two hips in line. Now bring your right shoulder forward, open your chest like a flower petal blooming, come down, push and push and push. Change, inhale to come up hips forward, arms back, stretch up tall, and slowly bend to the left as you press your hips to the right. So the general way this class works is that um, I walk you through every single posture. I will also demonstrate every posture. Um, you'll hear a lot of alignment cues like weight in the heels, hips forward, arms back, biceps with your ears, push your right hip a little forward to get your two hips in line, left shoulder forward, two shoulders in line. And then towards the end, you'll hear a cue, an invitation to get a little bit deeper it's usually a command said three times in a row, like push, 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 or kick, kick, kick. If you hear somebody say that cue at the end and you don't want to do it, you can stay light and lifted. Otherwise, you get a little deeper at the end. Come down, push, 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 change. Inhale to come up, stop in the middle. First back bend, take a deep breath, full lungs, keep your eyes open, relax your head back as far as it goes. You can give your head a gentle shake, look for the floor behind you, squeeze your butt, lift your chest, and immediately bring your arms back with your ears, try to touch the wall behind you. 
So whole spine back bending from coccyx to the neck, lower back, middle back, upper back, bend your total spine backward bending. Keep the weight in your heels, thighs tight, glutes tight, inhale, breathing, push stomach, thighs, hips, everything forward and bring your arms back, look back, fall back, way back, go back, more back, change. Inhale to come up, stretch up. Exhale, bend your knees, fold, arms with yours, hands to floor, drop your head, go for a walk, move your hips, shake your head. This is a U turn from back bending to forward folding. At the beginning of class, your spine might not be quite warmed up yet. Move your hips to get your lower back nice, relaxed, comfortable, easy, flexible. Padastasana, hands to feet pose, stomach in, bend your knees halfway. You can grab the backs of your calves, your Achilles, or your heels from underneath. Step on all 10 fingers. Pull on your heels, roll your weight into your toes, and lift your hips up. Stretch your upper body down from the lower spine to the floor. Pulling is the object of stretching. You're trying to create a tremendous stretching feeling on the back of your body, all over, inside out, bones to skin, fingers to toes. So this smile and happy face. It's kind of poetic. Pull on your heels, roll your weight into your toes, lift your hips up, push your knees back, stretch your spine down. Change. Come up, biceps with ears, knees can bend. You want to come up with a flat back. Very nice, arms down, and you stand a little taller. Second set, feet together, inhale, arms overhead, palms together, switch the grip, less dominant grip, interlock fingers, release index fingers, cross thumbs, keep the weight in your heels, hips forward, arms back, stretch up, and slowly drop to the right as you press your hips to the left. So in the second set of postures, maybe you go a little bit deeper, um, but really what we're doing in the second set of postures is using what we learned in the first set. So if in the first set you had to come out early, you were gasping, for air, it just did not feel right. Something like tweaked your back or whatever it is, right? You're going to stay light and lifted in the second set. If in the first set towards the end, you were like, I think I could go a little deeper. I don't feel much. This is your opportunity. Come down, push your hips to the left. Keep the weight in your heels. Left hip a little forward, right rib cage a little forward. Come down, push. Keep the weight in your heels. Come down, push. Squeeze your palms together. Come down, push, push, push. Change, inhale to come up, hips forward, arms back, stretch up, and slowly drop to the left as you press your hips to the right. Contract your quadricep muscles, your gluteal muscles, stomach in, lower abdomen, super strong. Lift your chin, lift your chest, slide your breastbone up. Press your right hip a little forward, left shoulder a little forward towards the end. Reach your right armpit up towards the ceiling and then steer it to the left like a steering wheel. Lock your left arm, touch your bicep to your ear, come down, push and push and push. Change, inhale to come up. Second heart opener, take a deep breath, full lungs, keep your eyes open, relax your head back, squeeze your palms together up to the wrist, wrist straight, and then bring your arms back with your ears. So if you can see your hands, notice if the wrists are bending and the hands are coming apart, squeeze your palms together, push your index fingers to the wall behind you, push your hips through to the uh, wall in front of you. So hips forward, arms back, keep the weight in your heels, lift your chest up a little bit more, push your arms back a little bit more, arms back, look back, fall back, way back, go back, more back, change. Inhale to come up, stretch up, touch biceps to yours, exhale, fold. Hands to floor, drop your head, go for another walk, move your hips, shake your head. And second set, here we go, bend your knees halfway. You can grab the backs of your legs or your heels from underneath, step on all 10 fingers. Little fingers touch side by side, thumbs with the index fingers. Wrap your elbows back behind you, try to touch elbows together behind you, stomach to thighs, chest to knees, face to the shins, no room for light and air between the upper and lower body. Pull on your heels, roll your weight into your toes and lift your hips up to stretch your upper body down. Pull on your heels, roll your weight into your toes, lift your hips up, try to lock your legs, eyes open, lock your legs, roll Roll forward, lock your legs, eyes open, last chance, push your knees back, lock your knees, lock your knees, lock your knees. Change, come on up, arms with ears, knees can bend, very nice, arms down, and you stand a little taller. Awkward Ukadasana, step your right foot to the right about hip width distance, six inches, not too wide of a step, insides of your feet parallel like 11s, arms up. Parallel to the floor, tricep muscles tight, all five fingers together, nothing loose or hanging, abdomen in, bend your knees, sit back and down into a chair. Feet flat position, spine straight to begin with, 100% of your body weight in your heels, sit down halfway only, hips into a chair. Suck your stomach in and lean your upper body back, depression to abdominal wall, contraction to abdominal muscles, suck it in, hold it in tight, keep your fingertips active, shoulders down, now lift your chin up, chest up, lean back, fall back way back, change, inhale to come up, keep your arms there, press your hips a little forward, spread your toes wide, now come up maximum on your tippy 
tippy tippy toes like a ballerina. Imagine somebody has you by the ponytail, stretching you up to the ceiling, bend your knees and sit down. So you want to use really use your core strength here, your back strength, so that even as the knees bend, the spine is lengthening. Lift your heels a little higher, working on toe flexibility, heels a little higher, knees a little higher, sit down into a chair, but don't sit below a chair. Change, inhale to come up. Last part, still breathing. Squeeze your knees together, let your heels come a little off the floor and slowly sit down. You can stop whenever you want or keep sitting down smooth, slow, and stop when there's a half inch gap between your hips and heels. Squeeze your knees together and forward, thighs parallel to the floor, arms parallel to the thighs, spine perfectly straight from the side, looks like you're holding a box. Change, slowly come up, knees together, Good, heels down, right foot back, arms down, shoulders down, take a breath, hold still. Second set, step your right foot to the right hip with distance, I'll show you from an angle. Keep the insides of your feet parallel, arms up, parallel to the floor, triceps tight, fingers in line with the collarbones, bend your knees and sit back and down. So you want to stick your butt out and fold forward to get your thighs parallel to the floor. Keep the insides of your feet parallel. Notice if the toes or knees are coming in or out, knees and toes pointing forward. Now lift your chin up, chest up, bring a little bit more weight back into your heels, chin up, chest up, change. Inhale to come up, keep your arms there, press your hips forward, try to eliminate any curvature in the lower back. Now lift your heels as high as you can, maybe heels a little higher in the second set one day, standing on point. Stretch up as tall as you can, squeeze your butt, bend your knees, sit down. So keep engaging the lower abdominal wall. Notice if you're sticking your butt out, move your hips a little forward, heels a little higher, press your shins forward, knees forward, sit down, lean back, change, and heel to come up. Last part, ooh, that one's hard for me today. Squeeze your knees together, let your heels come a little off the floor and slowly sit down. Remember every day is different, every class is different. The same way that you never walk into the same room twice, You'll never take this same yoga class again. So you're just enjoying it for what it is. Squeeze your knees together and forward, lift your chest. You want thighs parallel to the floor, arms parallel to the thighs, spine perfectly straight from the side. Looks like you're holding a box. Change, slowly come up, knees together. Good, heels down, right foot back, shoulders down, arms down. Eagle pose, Garasana. Look at your arms, identify which arm is right, which arm is left. Don't mix them up. Inhale your arms overhead. Exhale, swing right arm under left arm, right arm under left arm. Cross first, sit your elbows again if you can at your wrists, palms together, thumbs towards your nose, pinkies towards the front of your mat. You can also interlock fingers, grab a thumb or grab your shoulders and give yourself a big bear hug. Pull your elbows down, bend your knees, sit back and down, hips into a chair, stay down there and bring your right leg over your left leg. Oh man, everything is tight in my body this morning. Cross your legs, each other, twist like ropes. Eventually wrap your right foot behind your left calf muscle. Doesn't have to be today or tomorrow. If your foot is coming out, sit down more. If you're losing your balance, arch your upper body back. Bring your knees to the right, upper body to the left, twist like ropes. Shift the weight back into your heel. So bring your heel back, shins back, and then stick your butt out a little bit, sit down more. Lean your upper body back at the end. Good, change. Feet together, arms over your head. Let's do the left side. Bring your left arm, zoom, under right arm, left under right, palms together, thumbs towards your nose, pinkies towards the front of your uh, mat space. Pull elbows down, one day fingers go below the nose. Bend your knees, sit back and down, just like in chair pose. Shift your weight to your right heel, keep your hips low, and bring your left leg over your right leg. Left over right, cross twist, and eventually wrap your foot. Doesn't have to be today or tomorrow. So this side might look or feel a little or a lot different, and that's okay. Um, we're not symmetrical. <laughs> Nowhere in the ancient Vedic text does it say that yoga is about making you symmetrical, right? Yoga is about self-realization, God-realization, self-love, as long as you're starting to like realize things about yourself and tap into like your inner beauty, right? Your poise, your grace. You're doing great. Doesn't really matter if your foot wraps on one side, but not the other. Bring your knees a little to the left, upper body to the right, shift your weight back into your heel, bend your knees, sit down more, arch your upper body back at the end. Good, change feet together, arms over your head, right in the second set, bring your right arm under your left arm. So second set, if your wrists are bending, see if you can get your wrists straight and fingertips in line. 
so hard and uh, fingers in the center line of your face rather than to one side. So eventually fingertips together and wrist straight. That is like a lifetime of work right there. Bend your knees, sit back and down. Try to stay down there and bring your right leg over your left leg. Right leg over left leg, cross twist. So notice if your knees like move to one side of the room, right? Bring your knees to the right, upper body to the left. Eventually you want wrists over elbows, elbows over knees, knees over ankle. Bring the weight back into your heel, abdomen in. Relax your jaw, seal your lips. Sit a little lower, breathe a little slower. Arch your upper body back at the end. Good, change feet together, arms over your head. Last one, showing you from an angle, bring left arm under right arm, left under right. So eventually fingers in line and wrist straight. Oh man, pull elbows down, bend your knees, sit back and down. Try to keep your hips down low and bring your left leg over your right leg, left over right, cross twist, and eventually wrap the foot. If your foot is coming out, sit down more. If you're losing your balance, arch your upper body back. Bring your knees to the left, upper body to the right, twist like ropes, bring the weight back into your heel. You can stick your butt out a little bit, sit back and down, bring your upper body back at the end. Good, change, feet together, arms over your head, slowly arms down, party time. You can grab a sip of water if you want. Cheers, friends, happy Saturday. <laughs> Glorious, okay. Standing head to knee, Dandayamana, Janu Sharasana. Shift your weight to your left leg so your big toe points forward, inside of your left foot is parallel to your mat. Lift your right leg up. You can point your toes, flex your toes, keep your toes flexed back to your face. Option to stay here or as you're ready, round down and eventually pick up your right foot, haul 10 fingers interlocked, webbing to webbing grip. From start to finish, Standing legs should be solid, concrete, one piece, lamp post, unbroken, you have no knee. If you've been coming for a while, all of you have, and you know your left leg is locked, no bend, no wobble. Inhale, breathing slowly, gently. Lift your right leg up, stretch it forward until your right leg is exactly parallel to the floor. No higher, no lower, standing leg locked. Take a breath, Kick your heel forward, flex all five toes back towards your face from the ankle. You're training your Achilles to stretch. If both legs lock, puff up your chest and bend your elbows down. Notice if elbows are going out, bring the elbows down, shoulders down, chest down. Elbows touch the calf muscles one day. Elbows go below the calf muscles. Lock your knee, lock your knee, lock your knee. Change, slowly reverse. Out. Shift your weight to your right leg. Evenly distribute your body weight on your right foot without grabbing the floor of your toes. Know that especially in the traditional 90 minute version of this class, um, this is an endurance posture. We do hold it for longer, so you wanna go slowly. So lift your right kneecap up, press your right big toe down, and when you're ready, lift your left leg up. You can point your toes, flex your toes, keep your toes flexed back to your face. Notice if your foot comes in, eventually you're going to keep your heel in line with your knee. Option to stay here or round down and pick up your foot. And if you have a tight hip like I do, you'll notice when I pick up my foot, I do bring it in, but then I bring it back out, right? So you want your heel underneath your knee, standing leg locked. Option to stay here. This is the setup to standing head to knee, or when you're ready, slowly, gently lift your left leg up. Press your heel forward, flex your toes back. If your standing leg is bending a lot, think about lifting your hips up. So your knee is over your ankle rather than your big toe. We call it like a locked leg, but think of it like a lock and a lift. You're lifting your kneecap up, lifting your hips up, and then press your heel forward. Flex your toes back. Make sure you're still breathing in and out through your nose. If both legs lock from the side legs, make an upside down L, a 90 degree angle. Bend your elbows down. Touch elbows to calf muscles. One day elbows go below the calf muscles. Move your heel forward, hip forward, toes back, change. Slowly reverse out. You can put your hands on your back and do a little back bend hmm, or a knee bend. Huh. Second set, shift your weight to your left leg. Evenly distribute your body weight on your left foot without grabbing the floor of your toes. Lift your left kneecap, contract your outer thigh, inner thigh, and gluteal muscle. So you want to use the muscles on your standing leg to keep your joints really stable. When you're ready, lift your right leg up, 
flex your toes back. So you're already really engaging your gluteal muscle, your quadricep muscle. When you're ready, you're gonna round down and pick up your right foot. All 10 fingers interlocked, webbing to webbing grip. Concentrate, meditate. Don't forget to have fun. Inhale, lift your right leg up. So in the eight limbs of yoga, right, we're concentrating, we're meditating. We're also focusing on pratyahara or cessation of the senses. If both legs lock, then elbows down. The hardest part, tuck your chin to your chest. You have to cease some senses around you to tuck your chin to your chest and put your forehead on your knee. Heel forward, toes back, abdomen in. When you're ready, change. Take your time as you come out. That last motion of bringing the head down and then eventually the head back up. Many people say it taps into, again, pratyahara, cessation of the senses, right? To be able to shift your focus inward and then back out while you're balancing on one leg. It takes a little bit of like the room around you has to kind of disappear, right? I call it like mental floss, right? Everything else kind of has to go a little fuzzy so you can just purely focus on going inward. Last one, shift your weight to your right leg, lock your right leg, lift your left leg up, flex your toes back, round down, pick up your foot. Sometimes I refer to head to knee, this posture as like a secret garden, right? If you can touch your head to your knee, you're like in your own little world, it's pretty cool. When you're ready, lift your left leg up. Heel forward, toes back. Keep breathing, keep kicking. If both legs lock, you feel tremendous stretching feeling on both legs, bend elbows down. Elbows go below calf muscles, go to your secret garden. Slowly tuck your chin to your chest. Put your forehead on your knee. Hold, breathe. Whenever you're ready, slowly come back up. Take your time. Whew, okay, standing bow pulling pose. Dande Amana Dhanurasana, feet together. Bring your right hand up, elbow touches the body, palm faces the ceiling. Bring your hand out to the right. Give yourself a high five for practicing yoga today. Yes, reach back without turning or twisting your wrist. Pick up the inside of your right foot, have the ankle bone, thumb of your index finger. Bring your left arm up and back, right hip forward and down, knees together. Lift your left kneecap, point your right toes, take a breath, stretch up and slowly charge your body forward. Simultaneously kick your right leg back and up. Take your time. Slowly bring your body down and your leg up. See the foot come directly over the top of your head. So from the side, two heels in line. Kick back and up, two shoulders in line. Touch your chin to your shoulder. Shoulder blade, scapula, stretching away from the body. Kicking and stretching should be equal, simultaneous. 50-50, the harder you kick, you can balance forever. If you fall out, hop back in, kick even harder. So fall out five times, hop back in six. Slowly body down to parallel, big toe to the ceiling, keep kicking, keep stretching, body down more, leg up more, kick, kick, kick. Good, change slowly with control, kick yourself up. Very nice, take a breath. Bring your left hand up, out to the left, reach back without turning or twisting your wrist, pick up the inside of your left foot at the ankle bone, thumb with your index finger, bring your right arm up and back, left hip forward and down, knees together. Lift your right kneecap, make sure you're not grabbing the floor with your toes, point your left toes, take a breath, stretch up, and slowly charge your body forward. Take your time. Simultaneously kick your left leg back and up. Make sure all five fingers together, thumb with the index finger on both hands, palm of your right hand faces the floor. Get your right arm exactly parallel to the floor, no higher, no lower, standing leg locked. Slide your right shoulder forward, relax your left shoulder back, actively push your left foot into your hand. The harder you kick, you can balance forever. Make sure you're using the muscles on your standing leg to keep your joints stable. But again, you're not grabbing the floor of your right big toes. Point your left toes instead and slowly come down. And if you fell out, take a breath, hop back in, almost to the end. Body down more, leg up more, charge your body forward, try to touch the wall in front of you, kick, kick, kick. Good, change. Kick yourself up, very nice. So the first set of that posture is meant to be a full minute, good for you. Second set, shorter, bring your right hand up, out to the right, reach back without turning or twisting your wrist, pick up the inside of your right foot at the ankle bone, right hip forward, left arm up, 
lift your chin, lift your chest, stretch up, and start to kick into your hand. When you can't kick anymore, then charge your body forward. So in the dialogue, it says charge your body forward simultaneously, kick your right leg back and up. I find that it helps to kick before I charge, right? Kick before you stretch, and then slowly come down to parallel. Already halfway there. Body down to parallel, big toe to the ceiling, keep kicking, keep stretching, kick your big toe up to the ceiling, kick, kick, kick. Good, change slowly, kick yourself up. Last one, bring your left hand up, out to the left, reach back without turning or twisting your wrist, pick up the inside of your left foot at the ankle, left hip forward and down, right arm up and back, knees together. Lift your right kneecap, point your left toes, lift your chin, lift your shoulders, stretch up, and slowly kick, stretch, and breathe. Kick into your hand, stretch forward, breathe through your nose. Try to get the two heels in line, so you gotta come down a little bit, two shoulders in line, reach the arms apart, keep kicking, keep stretching, keep breathing, relax your jaw, body down to parallel, big toe to the ceiling, kick, kick, kick. Good, change, <laughs> kick yourself up, okay. Come to the back of your mat, Tula Dandasana, balancing stick. This next uh, posture is only 10 seconds. You have to make up, to, uh, you have to make up your mind, to use 100% of your strength in half a second. If you're late, it's over. Sometimes it's okay for it to be over, feet together, inhale, arms overhead, palms together, interlock fingers, release index fingers, cross thumbs, lean back and stretch up. Step your right foot forward like you're on a balance beam, shift your weight to your right foot, stretch up, point your left toes, and when you're ready, come down. Arms, body, head, legs, everything parallel to the floor from the side. Body makes a T like Tom, but not a broken umbrella. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Good, change left foot down. Right foot back, lean back, pop up your chest, engage your abdominal wall. Step your left foot forward, shift your weight to your left foot, stretch up, point your right toes, and when you're ready, come down, biceps with your ears, wrist straight. So really squeeze your palms together, keep your arms with your ears, lift your right leg up, body down, leg up, oops, I fell out, stretch, stretch, stretch. Good, change, right foot down, left foot back, arms down. So even in the shorter postures, right, if you fall out, you always hop back in, at least to the setup, I think for mental purposes as well as physical purposes, right? It's like you're always going to finish on one leg. Second set, shift down, bring your arms overhead, sideways palms together, switch the grip, interlock fingers, release index fingers, cross thumbs, lean back, step your right foot forward, shift your weight to your right foot, stretch up, point your left toes, and when you're ready, come down. So I'm not gonna come down all the way because my hip's bothering me. The cool thing about this yoga is even in the setup of posture, if you do the um, form correctly, you receive the benefits, right? So still stretching, body down more, leg up more, stretch, 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 change, left foot down, right foot back, lean back, abdomen in, step your left foot forward, contract every muscle in your body, point your right toes and tilt. So every muscle in your body contracting, except your face, relax your face. Mouth, mouth closed, eyes open, look a little bit forward, just beyond your eyebrows, body down to parallel, leg up to parallel, stretch, 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 change. Right foot down, left foot back, arms down. And enough of that, come to the top of your mat. You're welcome to face the long side of your mat for the next three postures. I will continue to face you. Standing, separate legs, stretching, Dandayamana, Vikaptapada, Paschimottanasana. Inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, step your right foot to the right, four feet minimum. Big step, arms down parallel to the floor. You can turn your toes in a little bit or keep your toes pointing forward so the insides of your feet are parallel. Just make sure your toes are never wider than your heels. Lock your legs, lift your chest, and swan dive forward. Look forward. Good, grab your heels from behind. If you can't grab your heels, you can try taking a bigger or smaller step. And if you still can't grab your heels, you can grab the outsides of your feet or start with your hands on the floor in front of you. This is the beginning of the separate leg series. For this posture and the next two, we're standing on two separate legs. It's not a very clever title, right? But there's lots of room to play. You can always take a bigger or smaller step or change where your hands are. Everybody roll forward, find your edge, lift your hips up, push your knees back, keep pulling. Keep stretching, touch your head to the floor in between your feet. 
Good, change slowly come up, take your time, try to come up with a flat back, very nice. Step your right foot back, arms over your head, and arms down. I'm gonna grab a quick sip of water. If in the first set your forehead touched the floor easily, take a smaller step in the second set. If your forehead was nowhere near the floor in the first set, try playing around with your step. Maybe a bigger step, but you never want your step like so wide that you lose control of your legs. You want to feel the stretch on the backs of the legs, not the inner thighs, so keep that in mind. Second set stretching, arms overhead. Step your right foot to the right big step. Just think about playing yoga. You can always play around with your step. Lift your kneecaps, lift your chest, and swan dive forward. Try to go down wrists in line with the shoulders. You got it. Grab your heels. If you can grab your feet, rather than bending elbows out, bend elbows back. Elbows to calves, shoulders to ceiling, belly button to spine. Everybody roll forward. Lift your hips up. Push your knees back. Lock your legs. First the legs stretching, then the hips stretching, then the lower spine stretching whole spine stretching, whole body stretching, 360 degree angle stretching, coccyx to toes, coccyx to forehead, touch your forehead to the floor in between your feet. If your forehead's not yet touching the floor, take a bigger step, roll forward again, keep pulling, keep stretching, try to touch your head to the floor in between your feet rather than in front of your feet. Very nice, change, slowly come up, take your time. Beautiful, step your right foot back, arms over your head, and arms down. Next is triangle trikonasana, the summit of the standing series, whereas in stretching pose, we stretch the hamstrings, the spine, and the torso. In triangle pose, we're going to open the hips and shoulders and twist the spine and torso. Inhale, arms overhead sideways. Exhale, step your right foot to the right, four feet minimum. Arms down parallel to the floor. Press your hips forward. Lean your upper body back. Turn your right foot out. Take a bigger step. Bend your right knee and lunge. Sit as low as you can. Squeeze your butt cheeks as you sit down. Eventually, right thigh bicep will be parallel to the floor. Sit down, lean back, and move your arms at the same time, elbow in front of the knee. However, if you're like me and your thigh's not yet parallel to the floor, maybe just the wrist or forearm in front of the knee. You want to feel one long line between your ankle to the crown of your head. Look up towards the ceiling, touch your chin to your shoulder profile of your face visible to the side of your back. So think about lifting your shoulder up so it's your shoulder touching your chin. Push your left hip forward and down. Push your right knee back with the help of your elbow. Now turn, twist upper body back like spine twisting posture. Lock your left leg, keep your left foot flat on the floor. Change, rotate your arms, straighten your right leg. Right toes in, left toes out. Make sure your heels are in line. In yoga, we practice a beginner mentality. So even if you've done this posture a thousand times, which some of us have, you're always making sure that your two heels are in line. Okay, inhale, bend your left leg and lunge. Sit as low as you can. Lean back and move your arms at the same time. Left elbow in front of the knee. Hover your fingertips between your big and second toe. Don't touch the floor. Don't push any weight on the floor. Look up to the ceiling. Touch your chin to your shoulder. Push your right hip forward and down. Push your left knee back with the help of your elbow. Now bring your left rib cage forward, right rib cage back. So the arms stay stacked, stay stacked. Six and 12 o'clock turn. Twist upper body back like spine twisting posture. Lock your right leg. Keep your right foot flat on the floor. Change. Rotate your arms. Straighten your left leg. Left toes in. Right foot back. Arms over your head and arms down. So if you take a moment here, standing up nice and tall, look over your right shoulder, come back to center, look over your left shoulder, come back to center. That's what it should feel like when you look up towards the ceiling. You're not like jutting your head around, right? You're just looking up, chin and shoulder touch. Okay, second set triangle. Inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, step your right foot to the right, big step. Arms down parallel to the floor. Push your hips forward, lean your upper body back, turn your right foot out, maybe left toes in a little bit. Inhale, bend your right leg, sit down, lean back, and move your arms at the same time. So just look up towards the ceiling, chin to shoulder, look for your left thumb, make sure all five fingers together, thumb with your index finger. You wanna feel a huge stretch on your chest. Reach your left arm up, stretch your right arm down, feel this huge expanse, sit down more, chest up more. Now right rib cage forward, turn, twist, lift your left kneecap, push your left knee back, 
lock your left leg, keep your left foot flat on the floor, change, rotate your arms, straighten your right leg, right toes in, left toes out, two heels in line, inhale, bend your left leg and lunge, squeeze your right glute as you sit down, lean back and move your arms, elbow in front of the knee, aim your fingertips towards your big toe rather than your heel, look up towards the ceiling, touch your chin to your shoulder, triceps tight, fingertips active, hands flat, not cupping, stretch your arms apart, sit down more, opening through the hips, turn, twist upper body back, opening through the chest, opening through the shoulders, sit down more, chest up more, turn, twist, lock your right leg, keep your right foot flat on the floor, change, rotate your arms, push the left heel into the floor, left toes in, right foot back, arms up, and slowly arms down. Wonderful. Standing, separate leg, head to knee, Dandayamana, Bikatsapada, Janusharasana. Inhale, arms overhead, palms together. Just cross your thumbs. Slowly exhale. Step your right foot to the right, three to four feet, at least a yardstick between your heels. Pivot on your heels to one side of the room. Turn your back toes in. Push your left hip forward. One, two, three, four, five times beyond your flexibility. Two hips in line, two heels in line. Backside foot makes a 45 degree angle. Stretch up, tuck your chin to your chest and slowly with control go down. Take your time. Now this is a rounded spine posture. However, if you are pregnant or have a history of slip discs, you can make it a flat back posture instead. Otherwise, keep coming down, round your spine, chin to chest, eventually touch your forehead and knee together, front side compression, throat choked, eyes open, breathing normal. If your forehead and knee aren't touching, you can try taking a bigger step or bending your front leg more. Eventually, knee and head touch, but again, you're never forcing the body. This is a compression posture. You're squeezing, compressing the front of your uh, torso as you round, stretch the back. Push your forehead into your knee, lock both legs. Hands together first, slowly uncurl, hands together, wrists straight, only thumbs crossed, arms with ears, but up last. Very nice. Pivot on your heels to the other side of the room, uncross your heels, turn your back toes in, press your right hip forward, right shoulder forward, biceps with ears, stretch up, tuck your chin to your chest, and go down. Chin to chest, stomach in, bend your front leg, touch your knee and head together. Stretch your fingertips forward, just beyond your big and second toe. Bring a little bit more weight into your front left foot and then lift your left hip up, press your right hip down. So your two hips are in line, two shoulders are in line. That way both sides of your back stretch equally rather than like twisting or crunching into one side of your back. Push your forehead into your knee. Lift both kneecaps, lock both legs, both feet flat on the floor. Walk your hands back together and change. Come up slowly as if you're dragging your forehead up your thigh, your chest, arms with ears, head up last. Good. Pivot on your heels, float your right foot back, and arms down. Take a breath. Slow exhale. Second set. Arms up, palms together, cross your thumbs, other thumb on top. Step your right foot to the right, big step. Pivot on your heels, turn your back toes in, Press your hip forward, right rib cage back, stretch up, tuck your chin to your chest, ride one long exhale all the way down. Chin to chest, abdomen in, touch your knee and head together. So again, you're not forcing your body, but um, if you feel good, make sure you're actually touching your forehead and knee together. You're not kissing your knee or smelling your knee. You're actually thinking about massaging forehead into knee, which some people say can uh, stimulate the pineal gland or third eye chakra, our source of consciousness in Eastern and Western medicine. Push your forehead into knee, lock both legs, hands together, change, come up slowly, left hip forward, left rib cage forward, full stop at the top. Good, pivot on your heels. I'm gonna do it at an angle. Turn your back toes in, push your right hip forward, stretch up, tuck your chin to your chest and go down. One day, arms behind the ears. Ooh, working on shoulder flexibility, chin to chest, stomach in. Touch your exactly forehead and knee together. Work on your balance, hands together, wrist straight, arms locked, just the fingertips on the floor, throat choked, jaw relaxed, stomach in, eyes open, breathing normal.
Push your forehead into your knee, lock both legs, hands together, change, one day arms behind the ears, head pushes arms up, head up last, very nice. Pivot on your heels, right foot back, arms down. Come to the middle of your mat for tree pose, Tadasana. This is the hip opening series. Lock your left leg and lift your right leg up. At first, the foot is maybe on the shin, the knee, the thigh. Eventually, heel to costume, slowly, gently. Let your right knee drop down and back into a half lotus shape, never forcing the body. Right hand up, and if you can balance, left hand. Notice if one hip is higher than the other. Most folks want to move the right hip forward and down. Press your hips forward, engage your abdominal wall, stretch the crown of your head up towards the ceiling, temporarily eliminate any curvature in your spine. Good, change right leg down, shift your weight to your right leg and lift your left leg up. Heel to costume, let your left knee drop. So muscle memory works like other forms of memory can bring one or both hands up, namaskar. So if you've ever had to do like memorization of like, I don't know, vocabulary when you're learning a second language, right? One of the tools is you study that vocabulary for a while and then you set it aside, you leave, and then you come back to it and refresh. That's kind of what we're doing here. We um, studied how to balance on one leg and then we put it aside, right? We stood on two legs and now we're back. So we're creating muscle memory for a standing locked leg for tomorrow. Good, change, left leg down. You can do a second set of tree or you can try toe stand, padangustasana. Pick a spot on the floor, four feet in front of you. Don't move your eyes, don't even blink. Lock your left leg. Oops, I blinked. Lift your right leg up, touch your heel to your costume. Slowly, gently let your right knee drop down. You can bring one or both hands together. This might be enough for today, just looking to the floor where eyes go, body nose to follow. When you're ready, hold forward, eventually coming down with a flat back. Hands to floor, put the weight in your arms, lean forward, lift your heel, bend your knee and sit down. Walk your hands back to either sides of your hips. Whether you are in tree or toe, move your right hip forward, drop your right knee down, point your right toes. Left hand up to the center of your chest, right hand up, palms together, elbows down, spine straight, come a half inch off your heel. Good, sometimes you just gotta Clap. Okay, when you're ready, hands to floor, you can come up on two feet or lift your hips up and then press your hips forward to reverse out. Good, and when you're ready, change. Shift your weight to your right leg, lock your right leg and lift your left leg up. Let your left knee drop. Remember, we're just playing around. You can bring one or both hands together. If your foot has a tendency to fall, hold onto your foot. And when you're ready, fold forward. Concentrate and meditate. Hands to floor, lean forward, bend your knee, sit down, walk your hands back. Left hip forward, point your left toes, left knee down. This is like the third part of awkward, but you're on one foot rather than two feet, right? Squeeze inner thighs together, left hand, right hand, elbows down, chest up, spine straight, come a half inch off your heel. Good, when you're ready, hands to floor. You can come up on two feet or lift your hips up, straighten your standing leg, and then press your hips forward to reverse out with a flat back. Very nice. Change, left leg down, honor yourself, give yourself high five, fist bump, turn around, savasana. We are on the floor for the rest of class. What a delight. Okay, head to the front of your mat. Groovy. Head to the front of your mat, peek to the back of your mat. <laughs> Bring your heels together, let your toes fall open arms down by your sides, palms face the ceiling, eyes open, mouth closed, breathing, normal. So asana is a gas station, maybe a Tesla recharge station, let it fill you up. When you lie still with your limbs close together, your heart and lungs don't have to work very hard to pump fresh blood and oxygen through your body. It's a truly restorative posture. And this yoga in general should be truly aerobic. Like, I don't know about you, but when I think about aerobics, I think about like Jane Fonda, right? In the 80s doing a dance. But by aerobics, right, we mean like um, oxygenated movements. So, you know, even in like Jane Fonda's workouts, right? 
eventually at a certain point you might do circular breathing or you might start to pant or hold your breath a little bit or breathe through your mouth but the idea with yoga is you're breathing in and out through your nose the whole time so you're never depriving your muscles of oxygen and this is what's really nice about yoga right so we don't get a lactic acid buildup you might be like a little sore the next day right as you're strengthening the muscles but the whole time you're breathing slowly in and out through your nose so you're never depriving your body of oxygen Tavana Mukhtasana when you're moving pose, bend your right leg up, interlock your 10 fingers, grab your right shin just below the knee, nice tight, white knuckle grip, pull your knee out to the right, down towards your shoulder, completely avoid your rib cage, keep your head on the floor, look down the center line of your body and pull down a little harder, maximum pressure in your lower right abdomen. Good, change, right leg down, bend your left leg up, interlock your 10 fingers, nice tight, anti-arthritic grip, pull your knee out to the left, down towards your shoulder, avoid your abdomen. Keep your right leg on the floor. If your right calf muscle does not naturally touch the floor, flex your right toes back to your face. Otherwise, keep both feet nice and relaxed. Change, left leg down, both legs up. Grab your elbows, each other. Give yourself a big hug for going to class. Good for you. Squeeze your knees together and down. Keep your head on the floor, look down the center line of your body and hold still. Eventually or in the future, when the bone joint skeletal system has improved, the whole spine from coccyx to the neck will be flat on the floor. For today, just try to keep your neck on the floor, shoulders, middle back, hips on the floor. Squeeze and breathe. And release, change. Arms down, eyes open, take a breath. Second set, bend your right leg up. Maybe switch the grip, other thumb, pinky finger on top, interlock your 10 fingers and grab your right shin just below the knee, pull your knee out and down. You're purposely putting pressure on your lower abdomen. This posture is called wind removing pose, but some people just call it gas removing pose, right? You're trying to remove gas bubbles from your abdomen before we lie down on our stomach. Squeeze, breathe, it's so good for digestion and change. Right leg down, bend your left leg up, pull your knee out and down. Try to keep right shoulder on the floor, right glute on the floor, right leg on the floor. Look down the center line of your body. So chin a little to chest, stretch the top of your head towards the top of your mat so the neck lengthens. Change, left leg down, both legs up. Grab your elbows each other, maybe other elbow on top. Never force your body. So I'm just grabbing my hands today, right? Eventually you're gonna grab your elbows, but you can also place your hands on your knees. You can interlock your fingers, grab your wrists, grab your forearms. You're getting compact, but never going to a point of pain. Chin to chest, shoulders down. So tuck your chin a little bit, puff your chest up a little bit, belly button heavy like lead. And then towards the end, press your shins into your forearms so you feel your tailbone kind of roll down. Good, change arms down and eyes open. Take a breath. Next, we do a straight leg sit up. If you have any concerns about your back, please skip the sit up, roll off to the side and meet us on your stomach. And as a reminder, you can always like skip a sit up and do a sit up. It's not like if you skip one, you have to skip all of them or if you do one, you have to do all of them, right? Everything is optional. So you can always roll off to the side and skip the sit up. Otherwise, legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest and sit up. Elbows to floor, forehead to knees. I find that this style of yoga attracts rule followers anyone, right? A lot of us are rule followers. Um, and so I have to remind myself and others that sometimes like you can break the rules in yoga as well as outside of yoga, right? You can do one sit up and then not the next. Okay, bring your chin forward for, just in case you didn't know that, bring your chin forward for Cobra. <laughs> Bhushangasana, place your hands flat on the floor, just below your shoulders. So your elbows point up to the ceiling, like grasshopper wings, zip up your legs like a Cobra's tail, toes and heels touch. Lock your legs, squeeze your butt, look up and lift. Stretch your upper body off the floor. Use 100% back strength. Come up halfway only, so belly button stays on the floor. Keep your chest lifted. Elbows stay bent, they make an L, a 90 degree angle like a rectangle. Roll your shoulders back and down. Stretch your elbows to your hip bones. Big toes to the back wall. Lock your legs, push your feet down, hips down, hands down. Look up, chin up, chest up, stretch up, breathe up. Good, change slowly with control, lower down. Look to your right, left ear on your mat, arms down, palms face the ceiling, toes together, heels fall open. And if being on the abdomen doesn't feel good for you today, you can always do fish pose, which I will demonstrate here. 
For a fish pose, you bring your arms underneath you, palms face the floor, bend your elbows and drop your head back. And now you get the same heart opener as Cobra, but you're on your forearms rather than your abdomen. Okay, second set, you can try Cobra or fish pose. I'll walk us through Cobra. Bring your chin forward, hands flat on the floor, just below the shoulders, feet together, knees together. Lock your legs, look up and lift. Stretch your upper body off the floor halfway only. Try to squeeze your shoulders together. Imagine you have a walnut in between your shoulders and you're trying to crack it. So this is a nice way to open through the heart space. Keep your fingertips together, hands flat. Push your hands into the floor a little bit and then think about lifting your kneecaps up. Press your feet down, squeeze your glutes, press your hips, hands down, look up, chin up, chest up, stretch up, breathe up. Good, change. Beautiful, Corey. Slowly lower down. Look to your left, right here on your mat, arms down, eyes open. Locust, Shalabhasana, chin forward, arms out to the side, feet together, toes, heels touch. And if locust does not feel good for you today, you can do um, a pigeon pose or a swan pose variation with your arms out. So this is the alternative. Uh, otherwise, arms out to the side, feet together, toes, heels touch. That felt so good. Lock your legs, point your toes, look up, and lift arms, body, head, legs. Everything lifts off the floor like a 747, taking off just your hip bones on the floor. The rest of your body's in the air. Look up. To oh, no, I forgot a posture. Whatever. We'll do it next. Look up towards the ceiling where your eyes go. Body knows to follow. We're doing it out of order. Oh, my gosh, right? Talk about breaking rules. Feet together, toes, heels, touch. Lock your legs. Squeeze your back. Point your toes. Lift your thighs up. Chin up. Chest up. Look up. Come up a little higher at the end. Good, change, slowly lower down, tuck in your wings, look to the right. I've never done this before. Old Holly would say, we're all going to yoga hell. We have done the sequence out of order. New Holly says, something tells me, I think we will be okay. Second set, full locus, chin forward, arms out to the side, feet together, toes, heels touch, lock your legs, point your toes, look up, hand lift, everything lifts off the floor. Maybe I won't post this on YouTube. This is kind of funny. Okay, knees feet together, lock your legs, squeeze your butt, point your toes, look up towards the ceiling. We are strengthening the middle spine here. Stretch your arms apart. You might notice that this feels a little bit different without doing locust pose first, right? Lift your thighs up, chin up, chest up, look up, come up a little higher at the end. Good, change slowly with control, lower down, tuck in your wings, look to the left, right here on your mat. Take a breath. Okay, now let's do locust, shalabhasana, chin forward, arm straight position, rotate your arms, palms face the floor, bring your arms underneath you as best you can, right left, right left, one day pinky fingers touch, lock your right leg, point your right toes and lift your right leg up to a 45 degree angle, half of 90, see the foot come directly over the top of your head, uh, lift your thigh up, stretch your big toe back, press your shoulders down, change, right leg down, relax your right leg, lock your left leg, point your left toes and lift your left leg up. And if locust pose doesn't feel right for you, you can come into a tabletop position, lengthen one leg back, and for a balance challenge, have the opposite arm stretching forward. Change, left leg down, third part, tuck your chin and mouth down, or if you're doing the alternative in tabletop, you're just gonna lift the other leg, other arm. Mouth down, squeeze your butt, lock your legs, point your toes, and lift both legs up, come up. Everybody come up, you can do it, struggle a little harder. Don't give up, mouth down, shoulders down, roll forward, squeeze your butt, lock your legs, point your toes, lift your thighs up. Good, change, lower down, bring your arms out, look to the right and take a breath. Now the sequence does go in its regular order on purpose, right? The idea is in cobra pose, you lift the chest, in locust, you lift the legs, and then in full locust, you lift the chest and legs at once, right? So again, like there is a method to the madness and like here, I just messed up a little bit today and like, I think we're all okay, right? Like we can mess up occasionally, we can break rules occasionally on purpose or not on purpose. And usually as long as you don't do it every time, it's all good. Second set, bring your chin forward on the mat, but also outside of yoga. Rotate your arms, palms face the floor. Bring your arms underneath you as best you can. One day fingers touch, but hands never overlap. Lock your right leg, point your right toes, and lift your right leg up. This is good practice for balancing stick. Notice if your hip is lifting up, drop your right hip down so the sole of your foot is flat to the ceiling. Change, right leg down, relax your right leg. Lock your left leg, point your left toes and lift your left leg up. Notice if you're pushing your wrists down, press your fingers down. Notice if you're pushing your elbows down, press your shoulders down, change left leg down. Third part, tuck your chin and mouth down, nice long neutral neck. Spread your fingers wide, 
triceps tight, micro bend the elbows, press your shoulders down, lock your legs, squeeze your butt, point your toes, and lift both legs up. You can do it. Mouth down, shoulders down, roll forward, keep the shoulders down, squeeze your butt, lock your legs, point your toes, lift your thighs up. Good, change, lower down, bring your arms out, look to the left, and let that one go. For Dhanurasana floor bow, if being on your stomach doesn't feel good, you can be on your back and do a bridge or a wheel. Otherwise, chin forward, bend your legs, grab your feet from the outside, two inches below the toes, thumbs with your index fingers. Squeeze your butt, point your toes, look up towards the ceiling and start to kick into your hands. Very nice. Continuously keep kicking without stopping, without intermission. It's the kick that drives the posture. Roll forward once, freeze between your ribs and hips, hold still. Do little sips of air in and out through your nose. You're kicking in two directions. You're kicking back and you're kicking up. Try to touch your big toes to the ceiling. Body down, get your thighs off the floor. Kick, kick, kick. Good, change slowly with control, lower down. Look to your right, left ear on your mat. One day chin and shoulder touch, one day whole left ear flat on the floor. Take a breath. Second set, bring your chin forward, bend your legs, grab your feet from the outside, two inches below the toes, thumbs with your index fingers, squeeze your buns, point your toes, look up and kick into your hands. Try to keep your knees and ankles in line with your hips. It's really hard for me. It might be hard for you too. Notice if the knees are like way wider than the hips, squeeze the inner thighs together. Point the big toes and pinky toes up to the ceiling. Notice if your wrists are bending, try to bring the insides of the wrists closer together. Roll forward if you need to. Look up towards the ceiling, kick and kick and kick. Beautiful as that change, slowly lower down. Look to your left, right here on your mat and let that one go. Just making your exhale a little longer than your inhale. Bring your chin forward, put your hands on the floor, press yourself up. Come to the top of your mat for uh, fixed firm, Supta Vajrasana. I'm gonna show you from the side. Open your knees, open your feet, so you start in tabletop position with the insides of your feet parallel. Option to stay here, or as you're ready, start to walk your hands back. You can keep your hands in front of you, beside you, or behind you the whole time. Eventually sitting down between your heels, doesn't have to be today or tomorrow. If you can sit between your heels and you're not in pain, put your hands on your feet, bend your right elbow down, stopping anywhere you feel a point of pain. Left elbow down, knees never come off the floor. If both elbows touch the floor, drop your head back. If your head touches the floor, tuck your chin in. Neck, shoulders on the floor, arms over your head, grab your elbows each other and hold. Wherever you are is perfect. You want a gentle stretch through your toes, ankles, shins, knees, thighs, and hips, but never a point of pain. And this is a wonderful opportunity to practice boundaries with yourself. It's good to challenge yourself or to get a nice stretch, but never going to a point that doesn't feel good or won't feel good after class. Change, put your hands on your feet, carefully push yourself up, head up last, very nice. Turn around, Savasana. Head to the front of your mat, feet to the back of your mat. And again, every class is a little different. Every day is a little bit different, right? This is not Groundhog's Day. If every class feels exactly the same, um, that is like cause for alarm for me, right? Like we want it to feel a little bit different. Um, and that's really not even a function of you changing what you're doing. It's just a function of you being in touch with your body, right? Because every day is a little different, even like, you know, the sun's going to be out slightly longer today than it was yesterday. Like there's external factors that are affecting our practice. And when we're really like in tune with ourselves, then we can just feel all that stuff through this repetition of movement. Again, the 26 and two is like a wonderful control group, especially during seasonal transitions or life transitions where the yoga gets to stay the same as you change, right? Like opening yourself like a flower petal blooming. It's beautiful. Um, okay. We can do a sit up or we can roll off to the side. Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest and sit up, elbows to floor, forehead to knees. Good. 
come to the top of your mat and also remember that second set often feels different. So don't get discouraged by the first set. Oh, uh, if first set was rough, try opening your knees wider. If first set was a walk in the park, bring your knees together. Keep uh, the insides of your feet parallel. And from here, slowly walk your hands back, slowly sink your hips down. Another tip, if you have big calf muscles, especially if you're like a bike rider, you can take your hands to your calves and roll the calves out, and then it might be a little bit easier for you to sit down. If you can sit between your heels and you're not in any pain, put your palms on your soles. Right elbow down, left elbow down, drop your head back, head to floor, tuck your chin in, neck shoulders on the floor, arms over your head, maybe other elbow on top. And if that's easy, walk your shoulders back closer to your hips to lift your chest higher like a natural human bridge. This is a really interesting shape. And this um, version of this posture is unique to 26 and 2 yoga. We are lifting the chest, bending the middle spine, and at the same time, lengthening the neck spine, right? So chin is to chest. Neck is flat on the floor, but the uh, middle and lower back arch. Change, put your hands on your feet, push yourself up, head up last, turn around, Savasana. So in most other styles of yoga, the goal is to get your back completely flat in that posture. In this style of yoga, the goal is to like bend the upper spine, middle spine. Um, and you know, so yoga is an ancient practice. And so sometimes we think that like every motion within this is sacred um, and like set in stone. But like a lot of times I have to remind you a lot of yoga, like not just in this sequence, but throughout kind of like the yoga lineage, a lot of it's just like one guy a hundred years ago or 50 years ago or whatever was like, I like it this way. Let's do it this way. So, you know, at the beginning of this style of yoga, like when Vikram brought it West, he was the same as other styles saying, keep your back flat. And then according to one of my teachers, Mary Jarvis, one day she finally got her back flat in the posture and she was like, Vikram, look. And he was like, who told you to do it that way? And she was like, you did. He was like, I don't like it anymore. Bend your middle back. And so now like based on that, we all bend our middle back. That sounds kind of silly, right? But I think that's true like with uh, older versions of yoga with other lineages of yoga. Um, of course we wanna like honor the roots of this yoga and do it the way I don't know that we're told but at the same time as a reminder like why we do posture certain ways like often just has to do with like the guy in charge's preference right so keep that in mind if something doesn't work for you doesn't mean you have to like mold yourself for it to work for you legs together arms over your head tuck your chin to your chest sit up biceps with your ears <laughs> good turn Come to the back of your mat, half tortoise, Ardha Kramasta. Sit knees, feet together, hips on your heels. If it hurts to sit on your heels, you can always start standing on your shins. Arms overhead, palms together, cross your thumbs, stretch up, and go down with a flat back. You're always welcome to put one or both hands on the floor to walk yourself in, or eventually go down forehead to floor, little fingers to floor in that order. Try to lock your arms, tilt your pinky fingers down, get wrists and elbows off the floor, reach your arms forward, sink your hips down, stretch, Stretch, stretch. Change, come on up, arms with ears. Very nice, arms down, turn around, Savasana. So as a refresh, this style of yoga, 26 and 2 yoga, was largely popularized, although not fully created by a guy named Vikram Chowdhury. And Vikram's um, guru or teacher was a guy named Vishnu Ghosh. Um, and Vishnu Ghosh was related to a guy named uh, Paramahansa Yogananda, who's famous for writing Autobiography of a Yogi, which is um, a really excellent book. It's like the only book that um, like Steve Jobs kept on his like iBooks on his like phone and stuff like that. Anyways, Google it, autobiography of yogi. It's pretty cool. But that's the lineage of yoga that this style of yoga comes out of. We call it like a gauche lineage of yoga. It's out of Kolkata. Um, and as a reminder, there's all these other lineages of yoga too. And what's really interesting is to watch how they're different. So like Ashtanga yoga, for example, there's a lot of similarities and some differences between the Ashtanga uh, Patanjali um, lineage of yoga, the Patabi Joy lineage of yoga, um, and the Bikram Ghosh lineage of yoga. And some of it is like, wow, same postures, but in different 
in different orders, right? So again, I find that so interesting because I'm like, what, you know, why this order versus this order? And you know, both styles have a reason. Well, we do this posture first for this reason, right? It all makes sense. And at the end of the day, I still go back to, it was some guy who was like, it makes sense to do this posture first, not this one, right? So again, there's a method to the madness. There's a reason we do this sequence and it's evolving. You're part of a living lineage of yoga that is still evolving as are pretty much every style of yoga still evolving. It's ancient, but it's not set in stone. Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. <laughs> Um, and you literally get to be part of that transformation, right? Which is pretty cool, especially as you practice over the years. Knees, feet together, hips on your heels, arms overhead, palms together, cross your thumbs, stretch up and go down. Forehead to floor, little fingers to the floor, reach your arms forward, sink your hips down, re-energize, reorganize, revitalize, stretch. Good. change, come on up, arms with ears, very nice, arms down, turn around, savasana. So some of the ways in which this is like a living, um, like a living yoga sequence, I'll give you one example, is like in the 70s, there you did three sets of the spine twist at the end. Now we only do one set, right? Another big change that's happened in the last couple of years, traditionally, this is the class we did, 90 minutes, only 90 minutes. Over the last couple of years, we've gone to doing 60 minute versions, 75 minute versions, and some people thought this was blasphemous. I was one of them for a long time. And then when we started offering the 60 minute class, I got to talk to all these people who were like, I'm so glad you offer this. Like, I just don't have time for a 90 minute class, but I can, I can sneak in the 60. Um, and it made me sad for the people, you know, I also prefer the 90 in like a personal practice. Um, but as a teacher and someone who wants yoga to be accessible to everyone, it made me sad that there were people like Vikram who were saying only 90 minute, only 90 minute, because I went, you're missing people, right? And the goal is we want to welcome more people. So again, we're part of this like living yoga lineage as all styles of yoga continue to evolve. Ours is as well. Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Good. Come to the top of your mat for camel ustrasana or deepest back bend. In a stand on your knees, six inches between your knees and your feet. Put your hands on your lower back, thumbs outside, fingers down to the floor. Try to bring your elbows close together behind you. Keep your eyes open. Lift your nose, lift your chin, look up. One day head goes back. Option to stay here or go back halfway and freeze in the middle. Option to stay here or when you're ready, right hand down, grab your right heel. Left hand down, grab your left heel. Thumbs outside, fingers inside, full palm grip on your heels. If you can't grab your heels, or if you have to lean way back with a flat back to grab your heels, keep your hands on your back. You wanna press your hips forward, hips over knees, lift your chest, heart space up to the ceiling, relax your head back. Eventually think about looking for your toes behind you. Good, change, put your hands on your back, press yourself up, head up last. Turn around, Savasana. Head to the front of your mat, feet to the back of your mat. And, you know, another big change to this yoga is when this yoga kind of came, so the whole thing with Vikram, right, is he's from Calcutta, okay? Um, his guru is like, you have to take yoga to the place where they need it most. So he goes to Hollywood, right? But along the way, he goes to Japan. So he uh, is teaching yoga in Japan, where they have saunas. And so we would teach yoga and then go into a sauna and be like, oh my God, I love the heat. So then he comes to LA, okay? And he starts teaching this yoga in like a 70 degree room. And it gets popular and people are like, make it hotter, make it hotter. So then he makes it an 80 degree room and they're like, make it hotter, make it hotter. And by the 2000s, it is now an 105 degree room. And people say, you can only practice this style of yoga in an 105 degree room, to which I say, but that's not what he intended to begin with, right? So again, as a reminder, we go, oh, there's only one spine twist. Well, in the 70s, there were three spine twists. It's only done in a 105 degree room. Well, in the 70s, it was a 70 degree room, right? Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. 
So my point is we get into trouble when we think that things are set in stone, whether it's yoga or stuff outside of yoga. The style of yoga attracts rule followers, and yet we are called to occasionally break the rules. Come to the top of your mat, open your knees a little wider, eight to 10 inches between your knees, six inches between your feet. I'll do a really fun rule break in the second set. Ready? See if you can catch it. Put your hands on your back, bring elbows close together, keep your eyes open, look up, look back, one day head goes back. Option to stay here or go back halfway. Option to stay here or when you're ready, left hand down, grab your left heel. What? Right hand down, grab your right heel. Thumbs outside, fingers inside. Full palm grip on your heels. Push your hips forward, lift your chest up, drop your head back, look for your toes behind you. Good, change, put your hands on your back, push yourself up, head up last, turn around Savasana. I did that once in a class, I was like left hand down first, and afterwards this woman, this like long-term practitioner who was visiting from out of town, she came up to me and she like whispered, she was like, I'd always wondered if you could do the left hand first. And I was like, of course you can do the left hand first. Now the point of doing the right hand first every time is one, the repetition, it's meditative, you don't have to think about it. And two, then because of the repetition, it's the control group, right? So today, if after class, like your shoulder is a little tweaked, you might say, well, is it because I put my left hand down first? When we do the right hand down first every time, that, that takes that variable out of the equation when it's the same every time. So of course there's a reason why it's right side first then left side and you can do the left side first, right? Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up, <laughs> elbows to floor, forehead to knees, come to the middle of your mat, rabbit, sasana, sit knees, feet together, hips on your heels, make L's with your hands, like little bunny ears, grab your heels from the outside, thumbs outside, fingers inside, full palm grip on your heels, stretch up, tuck your chin to your chest and slowly go down, chin to chest, abdomen in, forehead to knees, top of head to floor, pull on your heels, don't lose the grip and lift your hips up. If there's a gap between your knees and your head, you can walk your knees up one by one, but head stays in place. Um, if your feet are coming off the floor, if your grip is sliding, if you're tipping forward, ease up a little bit. You only want like 30% of your body weight in your head and neck. The rest of your strength is in the full palm grip on your heels. Pull on your heels, lift your shoulders up, press your hips forward. Good, change hips down, slowly uncurl, vertebra by vertebra. Head up last, very nice, turn around, Savasana. So, you know, there's some studios, old school studios that would have pictures of Vikram and Vishnu everywhere and, you know, like followed him. I'm all, I've always been very grateful to the studio that many of us went to, Hotspot DuPont, um, that really, you know, believe in the teaching of this style of yoga, but also weren't beholden to the person. I very strongly feel that the idea of a guru does not work in Western culture. Um, absolute power corrupts absolutely. I believe there are many beautiful things that Bikram brought to the West, and I think there's some not so good things as well. Um, again, I do not believe that gurus work in the United States, um, and I just really push back on anyone who starts to like hero worship a person, because again, this is like a living lineage of yoga, and we're all like not only um, taking the yoga, but we're also all um, really like being involved in it and involved in its transformation. So just keep that in mind, like you have power in your yoga practice. Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up, elbows to floor, forehead to knees, good. Come to the middle of your mat, knees, feet together, hips on your heels. And in fact, Vikram's wife, Rajashree would always say, her famous thing was like, you are your own guru, right? You are your best teacher. Knees, feet together, grab your heels from the outside, stretch up, tuck your chin to your chest and go down. So you're always your best teacher. You know your body better than anyone else. I know the yoga sequence pretty well. So between the two of us, we can usually figure something out. But again, you're your best teacher, right? Forehead to knees, top of head to floor. Pull on your heels, don't lose the grip. Lift your hips up. Lift your shoulders up, squeeze your heels together. Press your hips forward, engage your abdominal wall, pull, round your spine like a rabbit, hold and breathe.
Good. Chain chips down slowly and curl vertebra by vertebra just by this. Cut up last. Very nice. Turn around. Savasana. And when I think back over the last year, and one thing that I've learned, okay, I've known for a long time, like Bikram, not my guru, right? Figured that out pretty quick. Um, but what I will say is I was beholden to the heat. Like a year ago, had you told me, you know, you can touch your head to your knee without heat, or you know, you can do camel pose without heat. I would have been like, no, I don't know. Like, and I love the heat and I miss it. And this last year has taught me again, like even though I wasn't beholden to a person, I was kind of beholden to like, it has to be in an 105 degree room with a rubber floor and mirrors and like bad lighting and you know like the whole shit right and now i'm like yeah we can do this at home i can do this in a you know a room temperature room i hope to go back to a heated room sooner than later um but we can do this at our own home right and the sequence of yoga is still evolving um and people around the world right are doing it from home are doing it without heat and you know what like we're doing great, right? Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. It's pretty cool, pretty cool. Right leg out to the top right corner of your mat, bend your left leg all the way in, two legs make an L, a 90 degree angle, inhale your arms over your head, stretch up. Exhale, turn to your right, tuck your chin to your chest and go down. Forehead to knees, interlock your 10 fingers up to the webbing, under the ball of your foot, flex your toes back, bend your elbows down, suck your stomach in, left elbow down, left shoulder down, roll into the left, Good, change arms up, left leg out, right leg in, two legs make an L as in legs. Stretch up, turn to your left, tuck your chin to your chest and go down. Practice the grip for standing head to knee, all 10 fingers interlocked up to the webbing, under the ball of your foot, flex your toes back, bend your elbows down, right sit bone down, right knee down, right shoulder down. Change arms up, both legs out in front of you. If you're skipping, sit up, stay here. Otherwise, lay down, let your spine realign and sit up. That was my first sit up of the day. Felt really good. Paschimottanasana stretching. Bend your knees. Hook onto your big toes with peace sign fingers. Thumbs on top. Scoot your butt back. Right, left, right, left. Knees can stay bent if it helps you keep a flat back. Right. So puff up your chest. Eventually legs straight. Eventually legs lock. Puff up your chest and fold forward. Stick your butt out a little bit. Stomach to thighs. Pull. Chest to knees. Stretch. One day forehead and toes touch. Good change. Come on up, turn around, Savasana. So anytime you find that you're feeling like beholden to someone else, other than like your own personal higher power, if you have like a, you know, like a God or gods in your life, um, other than like a mystical higher power, right? Like a spiritual higher power. If you find that you were beholden to another person or even something like um, heat or a specific room, um, remember that you have your power from within, right? So we're letting go of like the false notion, not just of like a guru, right? But also that like you need heat or you need a certain outfit or a certain yoga mat or a certain space, right? You can have your yoga practice wherever you are, however you are, that power lies within yourself. You're not giving it up to another person or a place, right? It lies within you. Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Good. There's that famous saying, right? When you meet the Buddha in the middle of the road, kill the Buddha, right? When you meet the Buddha in the middle of the road, kill the Buddha. Right leg out, left leg in, inhale, arms overhead, stretch up. Exhale, turn to your right, tuck your chin to your chest, go down. Eventually leg straight, eventually leg lock, elbows down, stomach in, left elbow down, left shoulder down, roll into the left. Good, change, arms up, left leg out, right leg in, two legs make a 90 degree angle, stretch up, turn to your left, tuck your chin to your chest, go down. Notice if you're leaning to one side, right, evenly distribute your body weight on both sit bones, bring your right rib cage a little closer to your left thigh, then drill goes down, flex your toes back, change, arms up, both legs out in front of you, option to stay here or sit down, and sit up. <sighs> Stretching pose, bend your knees, hook onto your big toes, peace sign fingers, thumbs on top, scoot your butt back, right, left, right, left, 10 to 15 times. This is fun. If your legs are straight, lock your legs. Notice if the toes are turning in like tacos, tacos come after class, spiral inner thighs down, flex little toes back, puff up your chest and pull, stomach to thighs, pull, chest to knees, stretch, one day toes and head touch. Beautiful, change, come on up, turn around, Shavasana. So our personal power, right, comes from within, or again, can be connected to a higher spiritual self, a spiritual higher self, but um, 
not so much to things like earthly things, right? Your power comes from within yourself and you're not giving that up to any, anyone else, anything else. Legs together, arms over your head, flex your feet, squeeze your seat, sit up. Good. Come to the middle of your mat and towel, Ardha Matsandrasana, half Lord of the Fish Pose, bend your left leg on the floor, touch your right heel to your left knee corner, right arm close behind you, left arm up and over, grab your left knee with your left hand, hand, heel and knee touch, keep your left knee on the floor, right foot on the floor, point your left toes, inhale, stretch up, exhale, look over right shoulder twist. You can keep your right hand behind you or reach behind you, grab your left thigh with your right hand for a half bind, evenly distribute your body weight on both sit bones. Inhale, stretch up, lengthen. Exhale, pull your abdomen in, look over your right shoulder, twist and twist and twist. Good, change, unwind, swap out your legs, join you from the side, bend your right leg, touch left heel to right knee, left arm behind you, right arm up and over. Look down, um, and if you're sitting on your foot, slide it out of the way, evenly distribute your body weight on both sit bones. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, pull your abdomen in, look over your left shoulder, twist. You can keep your hand behind you for balance, especially if you're leading back, so try to sit up nice and tall. Otherwise, take your hand behind you, grab right thigh with left hand, point your right toes, keep your right knee, left foot on the floor, inhale, stretch up, exhale, look back, twist and twist and twist. Good, change, unwind, turn around, Savasana. Now, sometimes people are like, you know, okay, so there used to be three rounds of the twist and now there's only one. Why is there only one? And people will go, well, because it's kind of like a chiropractic adjust adjustment. Once you're, you feel that like pop in your back, it's done. You don't need to do another round. Um, so there's people will give all these reasons why we only do one set of spine twists. But if you ask Vikram, he goes, there's not enough time. There's only 90 minutes, right? And I love that even that guy, right? Who has taken advantage of his power at some points, even he has the wherewithal to be like, there's just not enough time. Right at the end of the day, yoga is both like holy and sacred and ancient and it's living and it's human and it's real. And sometimes there's just not enough time for another set. Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Okay. It's very human, very real, um, not perfect, always evolving, always changing. Knees feet together, hips on your heels, hands on your thighs can also sit on your butt crisscross applesauce. If you are pregnant or have high blood pressure, you're going to exhale slowly through your mouth. Otherwise, we'll go a little faster. Lick your lips, swallow a couple times, concentrate, meditate. Don't forget to have fun. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Lick your lips, swallow a couple times, sit up nice and tall and begin. Five, four, three, two, one. Good for you. Honor yourself. Give yourself a hug. High five. Pat on the back. Turn around. Savasana. Close your eyes. Open your arms and legs. So for my fellow rule followers, it's good to follow rules, but every once in a while it's good to break rules. And sometimes we accidentally break rules and that's okay too, right? I think it's Oscar Wilde says, all things in moderation, including moderation, I truly believe that the yogic path is one of moderation, right? Where we're listening to our body, honoring ourselves, um, staying within our boundaries, within our limits. And then every once in a while, going just beyond our comfort zone, because we know that it's a safe place to practice that. So just keep that in mind. Again, notice if you become too beholden to a yoga sequence, to a person, to something else in your life, right? You hold that power within yourself. And no one can take that away from you. Again, at the end of the day, yoga is about self-realization and God-realization. And both of those are deeply personal and things that you get to decide for yourself. Take an inhale through your nose. Even slower, exhale through your nose. Breathe in. Empty out. You are so very alive. Thanks friends, happy Saturday.